Hello everyone, my name is Debbie Maximabor and I am the assigned reporter in this video. And my topic for this video is all about the contingency models of leadership. Before we proceed on discussing what are the contingency models of leadership, let us know first what is the contingency theory. So the contingency theory or the contingency theory of leadership supposes that a leader's effectiveness is contingent on whether or not their leadership style suits a particular situation. So from the word contingent means depending on the certain circumstances. According to this notion, a person might be a successful leader in one situation and a poor leader in another. So this idea proposes that in order to increase your chances of becoming a productive leader, you should be able to assess each circumstance and determine whether or not your leadership style would be beneficial. In most circumstances, this demands you to be self-aware, objective, and adaptive. So, there are some factors that you have to consider of being a leader, especially in a workplace. And according to this theory, a leader's performance in the workplace can be influenced by a variety of things. This include factors like the size of the team, the scope of the project, and project that delivery date for a result. Different leaders, each with their own different style, will react differently to these elements. According to contingency theorists, no matter how good a leader is, there will always be a scenario that will test them. And I believe most of the students here who are watching this video has an experience of being a leader. And most of us here actually encountered the unexpected problems during the process, right? And it's really hard for us and we really have to be resourceful in order to proceed and meet the desired goal of our project. As a result, leaders must be able to admit that their success is contingent on their surroundings as much as their particular abilities. Like managers and supervisors may need to modify their leadership style to the present scenario or outsource part of their leadership tasks to a co-worker in order to effectively lead their team. For example, consider a project manager named Dog. Dog finds it's much easier to communicate in writing rather than in person. So he usually encourages his team by sending them thoughtful emails at the end of every week. However, there is a new employee in the office who is not very receptive to written communication. To connect with this employee, Dog will need to either take an effort to change his method and encourage his employee in person or he will have to assign this task to the assistant manager. So what do you think about Dog? Is he competent or incompetent leader? In this case, Dog is not persistently incompetent leader. He is a good leader who is facing an unexpected problem. If Dog realizes that he will need to adjust to his environment rather than trying to push his customary tactics, he may still be a very productive leader who effectively encourages his team. So the contingency theory of leadership is impacted by a range of specific factors in the range of workplace, including the maturity level of employees, are they responsible enough or not, relationship between co-workers, workplace, management style, typical work schedule, goals and objectives, standards for behavior, company policies, employees' work styles, and employees' morale. So you really have to consider and know these things, especially in managing a group. Okay? To understand this theory more, we will look at the three different models of contingency leadership. First is the Fedler's model. This model states that three important factors to contribute situational favorableness. To be productive, leaders must consider these factors. So we're going to talk about these factors later on. However, this theory also considers leadership styles to be fixed and unchangeable. Therefore, if a leader's style is not a good fit for a particular situation, they will need to be replaced by a different leader. So to apply Fadler's theory, you have to determine your leadership style and your situation's favorableness using Fadler's model. Next model is the situational model. 
Contrary to Fedler's model, this model believes that leaders should first consider variables that affect their workplace and then decide the best tactic for how to proceed. So, on contrary to Fedler's model, the situational leadership model suggests that the best option for leaders is to adapt their leadership style to fit their team members and their individual abilities. Also, situational leadership, also called the Hersey Blood Card Model, is primarily concerned with the maturity level of team's members. So, there are three factors of maturity level. And these are, high maturity team members are experienced and able to make decisions independently. Moderate maturity employees are capable but lack confidence or have confidence but are not willing to complete the task they are assigned. And lastly, low maturity employees are enthusiastic and willing but not have the skills or experience to complete the task. And the third model is the Path Goal Model. The Path Goal Model is primarily concerned with identifying processes or paths that will allow each team members to meet their individual objectives or goals. Leaders who implement this model adjust their behaviors and expectations to positively affect their team's productivity. So this goal requires the leader to be extremely flexible in their leadership style. They will have to find a way to meet each team member's specific needs to assist them in reaching their daily or weekly goals. Now, let's talk about more about the Fedler's Contingency Model. So what is the Fedler's Contingency Model? Fedler's Contingency Theory or also known as Fedler's Contingency Model or Fedler's Theory of Leadership states that there is not one best style of leadership. Rather, the most effective leadership style for any given situation is one that aligns with the situation at hand. And this theory was developed in 1960s by the Austrian psychologist Professor Fred Fedler. He studied leaders' personalities and characteristics and came to the conclusion that leadership style, since it is formed through one life experiences, is incredibly difficult, if not possible, to change. For this reason, Fedler believed the right leader must be chosen for each job based on their skill set and the requirements of the situation. In order to best match leaders with situations, each leader must first understand their natural leadership style, then they need to evaluate whether their leadership style, if it is right for the situation. To put simply, Fedler determined that leaders' ability to succeed rests on two factors, which are natural leadership style and situational favorableness. Now let's talk about the elements of Fedler's contingency style. First is the leadership style or the natural leadership style. To help you determine your leadership style, Fedler developed the least preferred coworker scale or LTC scale. The scale asks you to describe the coworker you least prefer to work with. The more positively you rate your least preferred coworker on a variety of different criteria, the more relationship oriented you are. The least favorably you rate them on the same criteria, the more task oriented you are. Essentially, if you're a high LPC leader, you're a relationship-oriented leader. Relationship-oriented leaders are great at building relationships, facilitating team synergy, and managing interpersonal conflict. While if you're a low LPC leader, you're a task-oriented leader. Task-oriented leaders tend to be skilled at organizing projects and team to accomplish tasks efficiently and effectively. So the rationale behind these two leadership styles are pretty straightforward. First, rating your least preferred coworker favorably means that you see the best in people, even those who wouldn't necessarily choose to work with. And rating your least preferred coworker unfavorably suggests that you struggle to see their contribution since you value efficiency and effectiveness over other attributes. Next is situational favorableness. Fedler requires you to assess the situation at hand. Situational contingency theory, also known as 
Situational leadership states that every situation that requires leadership is different that requires a specific type of leader. The favorability of a situation depends on how much influence and power you have as a leader. Situational favorableness has three variables, which is leader-member relations, task structure, and position. First is the leader-member relations. Leader-member relations are all about trust, like does your team trust you as a leader? The more they do, the higher your degree of leader-member relations and the more favorable the situation is. Next is the task structure. Task structure refers to the clarity of the task required to complete a project. Higher task structure results in a more favorable situation. The more clear-cut and precise tasks are, the higher the situation task structure, whereas the vulgar they are, the lower the situation task structure. And lastly, position power. Position power refers to the authority you have over your team as a leader. If you can reward them, punish them, or tell them what to do, your position power is high. As you can imagine, higher position power makes the situation more favorable. Now, let's know about how to apply Fadler's contingency model to be a better leader. So the first step is understand your leadership style. In order to identify your natural leadership style, we return to the LPC scale. And as you can see on your screen, that is the table of the LPC scale. So, and to determine your score, you can interpret your score as follows. If you scored 73 and above, a high LPC score, you are a relationship-oriented leader. And if you scored 54 and below, a low LPC score, you are a task-oriented leader. But if you scored between 55 and 72, you are the qualities of both a relationship-oriented and a task-oriented leader. Deciding which style fits you better will take you further exploration through other leadership theories. So your second step is assess the situation. In order to assess the situational favorableness to determine leadership effectiveness in a specific environment, Fadler poses three questions. Are leader-member relations good and trustworthy or poor and untrustworthy? Are the tasks at hand clear and structured or confusing and unconstructed? Is your authority and influence over your team strong or weak? Don't solely rely on your own judgment of the situation. Ask the group members to anonymously answer these same questions and calculate the average of all answers to best understand the situation's favorableness. Seeking your team's insight is a great way to empower them and improve team morale. Step 3. Decide whether you're the leader for the job. Now that you have a grasp on your leadership style and the favorableness of the situation, you can determine whether you're the right leader for the situation. If you're a task-oriented leader, you're the best fit to tackle highly favorable and highly unfavorable situation. The extremes are where you'll serve your team's best. And if you're a relationship-oriented leader, your style is the best suited to lead in situations with moderate favorability. Step 4. Now, step 4. Consider delegating to the right leader. So, so according to Fadler, leadership style is fixed and cannot be changed. This means that if a leader style isn't right for a situation, that leader may need to delegate leadership to the right person. While it can be challenging to admit that your skill set isn't right for a situation, there is no shame in delegating leadership to someone else. In fact, delegation is necessary for effective leadership. If you're a manager, consider promoting someone on your team with the opposite leadership style to supervise the team wherever needed. Alternatively, if you're overseeing a cross-functional project, see if one of the cross-functional team members is better fit for the situation. Next is step 5, trying to change the situation. Improve leader-member relation. If it would help the situation to improve, 
lead your member situations. Try focusing on your transparency with the team or entrusting team members with new responsibilities. And 60% of leaders worry about how their team perceives transparency by improving it wherever possible. Leaders can feel confident that their team members will trust them. By improving it wherever possible, leaders can feel confident that their team members will trust them, which in turn improve leader-member relations. Now, let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages of Fedler's model. So the advantages of Fedler's contingency theory include, first, it improves a simple way to determine when a leader's skills are most and least impactful. Second, it encourages leaders to practice self-awareness and essential quality for making decisions for a team. Next, it takes the situation into account, branching beyond many leadership theories that solely focus on their leader themselves. And lastly, it's straightforward. LPC and situational favorableness are both relatively easy to calculate. While the disadvantages of the Fedler's theory, it is far too rigid. If you can't change the situation at hand, the theory states that the only option you have is to give up leadership. Next is, it's unclear that leaders who fall in the middle range of the LPC test should do the theory essentially just says to figure it out. Next is, self-assessment isn't always reliable. Even when we try to be self-aware when completing the LPC test, our egos and biases have a way of inferring, even subconsciously. And lastly, the theory may discourage leaders who are doing a fine job especially if they perceive their leadership style and situation to be at odds when they actually are it. So that's all my report and I hope you learned something. Thank you for watching.